Good morning, good day, good afternoon. My name is Alexander Moroz and today we're gonna talk about overclocking i7 on motherboard with socket P55. So we're gonna talk today about i7 overclocking guide P55 101. Alright, um, right now we are in the BIOS and BIOS stands for a basic input and output um, system so BIOS usually has the blue screen so when you're gonna see this blue screen with a bunch of features and you're not in the windows means that you're in the BIOS and regular is gonna say like CMOS or a BIOS um, before you're gonna start overclocking, I suggest you to um, check um, your system stability. Make sure that your processor and the whole computer working perfectly, as the way it is, without any problems, like without any shutdowns, air, and not getting too hot. All right. Overclocking is good for the custom and um, uh, third parties, um, third market uh, parts like ASUS, EVGA, MSI, Intel, AMD, Corsair, and other brands. If your computer came from HP, Dell or other um, putting together brands you probably is not going to have high overclock or you probably not um, have the ability for the overclock because they're using their own hardware which is cheap not doesn't have ability for overclock and not gonna run at the high um, stability when you're gonna overclock something it's gonna crash so I suggest you to stick with the third party's um, motherboard for the overclocking and motherboard is very and main um, key in overclocking the CPU i7 so make sure uh, you're buying a nice decent motherboard and socket P55. I'm not suggesting you to buy from Intel because uh, Intel motherboards by Intel motherboards, the whole by Intel, manufactured by Intel, they're not good. As motherboards by EVGA, ASUS, MSI, um, DFI, and other brands. So, um, just look for a nice decent motherboard and for socket P55, I suggest you to get EVGA P55, SLI or any EVGA P55 will have ability to um, overclock your CPU, but P55 um, EVGA SLI or EVGA P55 SLI FTW or classified those two versions will be the best to overclock your uh, Intel Core i7 800 series alright you probably concerned how to get into the bias well, um, it's pretty simple. You need to restart your computer, and after the black screen, it's gonna post. And when it's gonna post, you're gonna see some um, screen or writing. You're gonna click delete button. It's gonna bring you to the. Um, blue screen which is bias 
All right. So and uh, right now I'm using the EVG B55 SLI FTW and. Uh, As you can see, um, this is uh, one of my friend computer, and he asked me to overclock it uh, to the top as as high as I can go. And we put this computer together. I told him what kind of parts he should get for i7 to to be able to overclock i7. I also suggest you to get the memory, which is um, 1600 megahertz DDR3 good brands are Ozis, Corsair, G-Skill stick with those 1600 is nice if you can get higher than 1600 it's a plus 1333 uh, megahertz memory is not very good at overclocking all right so we're not going to talk about memory overclocking in this tutorial i'm just going to give you a basic information and i already did it and we're going to be focusing on i7 overclocking so in the bias you need to find uh, features where you can control the frequencies and voltages and on this evg p55 FTW it's right here I'm gonna click and it's gonna bring me to them another window where I'm, I will have ability to control the voltage frequencies like CPU frequencies um, control the CPU multiplier change the multiplier and uh, control the v-core that's the features dim voltage cpu vtt voltage cpu pll and that's all what we need this is the key and QPI uh, sometimes you have the QPI voltage as well so this is the keys in overclocking so the keys is you need to have V-core voltage CPU VTT voltage um, CPU frequency settings so you can change it and CPU multiplier settings so you can change the multiplier alright so memory configuration where you can change the memory frequency in some boards it's probably going to be at, on the same page but also you need to control the memory so you need to set the divider or the frequency so you're not gonna go over that your memory design over that frequency that your memory is designed so um, plus the latency like DRAM, TCL, CAS and RAS and stuff like this so uh, also you need to have ability to control the CPU uh, configuration uh, where you can um, shut down your um, uh, C1E support, Intel R speed step tag, and Intel C state tag. You need to shut it down. All right. So and uh, so that was the keys, and uh, you got the basics. And let's right now we're gonna talk about what it's all about and how to overclock it. Right now you can see it's running at 3850 
almost 4 gigahertz without 150 megahertz, megahertz. and uh, unfortunately this uh, processor is not able to run at 4 uh, gigahertz uh, stable using prime 95 and um, uh, while we're gonna gonna talk about stability I'm gonna tell you about the private prime 95 but the processor is not able to so it's running at 3.8 as you can see So, let me go ahead and uh, bring it to, um, to default. So, anytime you would like to bring your overclocking to default, all that you gotta do, you gotta just go and click this uh, load optimal defaults. You're gonna click on that and you're gonna click OK. After that, you're gonna click save changes and exit and click OK. So this will bring it to the um, optimal defaults and all the overclock will gone at that moment. If something gonna go doing uh, gonna go wrong during overclock that's what you can do. Yeah you can do like this and you will be able to uh, just bring your settings back to um, back to stock alright and it's good to bring it back to stock because we're gonna talk about the stock So, I just went to frequency and voltage control where I can control the voltages and it's very important um, to have that ability when you're overclocking and today I'm using the EVGA P55 FTW motherboard and in the bias on that motherboard you need to go to frequency voltage control and when you overclocking the i7 on socket P55 or any other sockets you need to have uh, some features available for you otherwise you're not gonna be um, you're not gonna have um, ability to overclock your CPU and those features are simple you need to have ability to change the CPU multiplier you need to have ability to change CPU frequencies sometimes it's called BCLK frequency it's um, but on this motherboard it calls the CPU frequency but on some other motherboards it's called B 